So could you talk to me a little bit about your decision in deciding to create the Imagination Agency? Yeah, so the Imagination Agency, I started because I, well, first it started when I started reading children's books to my daughter and I realized there was not a lot of characters that look like her and I always thought about what her dreams would be and I would tell her she could do all her dreams. So then I started thinking about what all my dreams was were, were to be a writer, to create and make things. So the first thing I started was making children's books so that she could see herself in the characters that we, we read about. So I started Imagination Agency and it's really about creating a, a black escapism experience through the things that I create, whether that's apps, games, movies, books. So it's really started back in the day to just kind of be at the forefront of storytelling for kids of color. And then, so what is the difference between the books that you wrote that were inspired by Jet, your daughter, mm -hmm. and Dear Black Boy? Well, the, the difference between, it's just a concept of story. So the difference with AJ is uh, really about a little black girl using the power of her imagination. When I think about my daughter, I think about black women in the world, I want to give them the freedom of just using their imagination. They've been strong for so long, it's about time just like, just to go on these great adventures. With Dear Black Boy, I wanted to encourage black boys to dream outside of sports and think differently. Like, don't be tied to a game or tied to wearing gym sneakers and playing a sport, but you can also make films, you can make movies, you can do apps, you can do so many other things, but just introducing them to the possibilities is really what Dear Black Boy is. I think, I think of it as a bridge that I'm building that parents could tell their kids what's on the other side and I could show them what's on the other side as well. Yeah, and I found it interesting in reading the book that you as a retired football player are telling other little black boys to aim for more than just that. So what was the deliberate choice in that message specifically? Well, the, the whole thing is, like I've been, I've done it. I've done, I've done it. It's not the only thing out there. So at one point, I felt like you know we a lot of kids feel like it's the only thing that we have that's possible for us. So really, I'm like, yeah, I did that, but we could also do this as well. And there's a lot of kids who won't make it to the NFL, which I realize there's only 1,500 people in the NFL. A lot of kids have a better chance of be, you know, being a doctor than they have being a Hall of Fame football player. So, but the. What I realized is also that they've never been introduced to those possibilities. Like they've been introduced to the possibility of rapping, but never to scoring films, right? So it's just how do we change that language and tell them that, yeah, you can play sports, but if you play sports, you use sports. Because so many of our kids get used by the game and they get nothing out of it. When they leave, it's just done. So use it as a tool to open up other doors that you want to that you want to open in life. And don't just let the game use you, get something out of it. Growing up, was that always your mission for sports? Because you wrote, illustrated, and I guess distributed this book, right? So you've clearly always had a creative streak. Yeah, as a kid, like I was, I've never looked at myself as an athlete. I just looked at myself as someone who plays sports. I've just been able to take it to the next level. I always looked at myself as a creative who have athletic ability, not as an athlete who was creative. It was just a, it was a totally different for me. So growing up, I enjoyed band, music, art, making things, and I enjoyed dunking on people and stiff forming people too. So. I never really put one down for the other. And my ultimate goal, I always knew that football was going to end. Like every career has an expiration date as an athlete, but as a creative, there's no expiration dates on your creativity. In the book, you mention a lot about freedom. So I just wanted to ask you, what does freedom mean to you? Yeah, so I feel like freedom is the, freedom in the sense of what I think of freedom is freedom of self. It's the ability to be who you are, truly be who you are in the world without the fear of being judged. And I think that's the ultimate freedom that we could experience as people to just reveal ourselves to the world and not feel like someone's going to judge me for who I am, how I think, how I move, and just kind of be who I want to be and who I am. Um, so, and the freedom to go down any path that you choose, right? A lot of times we feel like they roll us a ball and say, good luck, but if we do comic books or we do, you know, we're in the movies, we're not as black as the other black boys who play sports. So there's a freedom and we have to give the freedom to dream, like dream the dreams that they want to dream, dream, become what you want to be. And that's why in the book, they're in a maze, but there's so many different ways to get to the destination because everyone could go to a different path and find the freedom of self. The message of the book, to me, reading it as an adult with a son and who is also a black woman in America, I felt like it was very heavy, but you made it palatable for little kids, right? And to, I think, yeah. start the conversation. So what was that creative process like? The whole, I mean, I wrote it in a very, like, dark moment. I wrote it, the original poem, I wrote it when, um, after the Arthur Sterling incident, um, and watching it, while I'm watching it, I'm literally writing those words 
as I'm watching this happen. Because I saw I saw Alter Sterling, I see myself, but other people don't see him. They don't see what we see when we see each other. Like we see dreamers, we see dancers, we see magnificent people, but a lot of people just see danger when they look at the black boy. So uh, when I write in that, I try to find a way for them to digest it. And I thought sports metaphors, sports is something that everyone could connect with and everyone kind of understand. To use the sports metaphor instead of this big game being a Super Bowl, it's about the game of life. Right? How do we prepare kids to win at the game of life? Not just to win on a basketball court, or on a football field, but how do we prep them? That same day, taking them to the gym, you know, making sure they're watching the games, taking them to the game. How can we do that same thing for other aspects of life so that they could win in something that's going to last way longer than an athletic career? I want to create a path where the parents can have this conversation with their kids. Like, I didn't want to have the conversation, but I wanted to start the conversation because everyone has to want to have that conversation at a different time and have it in a different way. But this so many each page is a start to spark a conversation. And you're very um, specific in letting in providing the message that the game of life is a marathon, right? Yeah. And in light of Nipsey Hussle passing, I kind of correlated those two things because his whole rap career was based on the same thing that you're writing about in the book. It's like, I can use rap to start here as a black person, but I know that there's so much more that I can help all of you achieve above that. So I, I, has anyone correlated that to you yet? Yeah, I think a lot of the things that we do are similar. He used rap as his side hustle to really blaze the path that he wanted to do to change his environment in the world. I use sports the same way that Nipsey used um, rap to, you know, that's going to elevate me to the level where I can build a platform and better. Once I get my platform, where do I want to take my people? A lot of times we build that platform and people stay up there, get on that platform, they don't really do anything to encourage or to change or to promote, you know, what we can become. Um, so with the marathon, the idea of the marathon, like it is, it is a constant run and you run it every single day, you run it to get better and it's a finish line you never really cross until that day comes for you. So, right. So it's like how you constantly run it toward your goals and your goals are always changing. So you have further and further and further to run, but to run marathons, you have to train daily, right? You can't just not, you can't go like, oh, I'm not going to run this week. I'm not going to run next week. Cause then you lose what you gain. So like you have to constantly train yourself to run through life and. That's kind of like the whole thing with the marathon. So um, I get, I got Nip Nipsey and what he's trying to do and what he's trying to achieve. And we've been working a similar path for a while. What more can we expect from Imagination Agency? Man, there's going to be wizards. There's going to be, <laughs> there's going to be magic, outer space, superheroes. So uh, making apps, doing more films. Like really, I'm just about to, like just when you think of black escapism, you're gonna think of the imagination agency.